there's nothing new about rebuilding salvage titled cars to put back on the roads. Body shops have been doing it forever. However, like everything else, Tesla, it's a little bit of a different animal. So I'm gonna be as transparent as possible in explain to you the process that we had putting a Model 3 back on the road. Now, this is a 2019 Standard Range Plus. It was a rear wheel drive only car. It was destined to be a donor car for another electric project in the shop. However, once we got it up here, um, the damage was fairly minimal. This one had no structural damage at all and everything else was uh, relatively superficial. The deciding factor, however, was that through a couple of calls, this car had bought and paid for full self-driving that came with it. Now, we were unsure if it would remain with the salvage title car and transfer over to my name, but uh, so a little bit of a gamble on my part, we attempted it and um, it actually turned out fine. Now, one thing to consider when putting a Model 3 back on the road is that any time a Tesla is branded salvage, Tesla itself considers that car unsupported. Now, what does that exactly mean? Um, it is a little bit misleading. This is, uh, the breakdown is, like every other car company, it means you no longer have a warranty. Now, this car was uh, 2019, 31,000 kilometers on it, so relatively low mileage. But um, I've kind of made a career voiding warranties anyway, so that's really a non-starter for me. Uh, but the other big one is that you are now booted off the supercharging network. So anything that is branded salvage is no longer allowed on the Tesla supercharger network. Now Tesla has reintroduced a program to get you back onto the supercharger network. Um, it is entitled the Salvage Title Vehicle Fast Charging Safety Inspection. So this is their confidential internal documents, of course. Um, this involves two different inspections. So the first inspection is entitled Salvage Title Fast Charging Safety Inspection. Now what that does is Tesla verifies that the high voltage system is safe. It does isolation checks. Um, and just make sure that it's safe for their technicians to actually work on the car. Um, once they do that, Tesla will still work on your car. Now, everything's out of pocket, but the dealership will still work on your car. So not completely unsupported. Once they've done that, they can do the salvage title fast charging safety inspection and providing you pass that, they will put you back on the fast charging network. Um, varying reports, I'm hearing that's about 1200 bucks roughly um, cost, but uh, I didn't do that for my car, so I don't know firsthand what the cost was with that. Um, yeah, next would be, uh, I still receive over the air updates, so I'm not really unsupported as they are still updating the car regularly. And like I said, I retained the full self-driving. So with those updates, I'm getting the beta rollouts for the full self-driving as well. Now, interestingly enough, when we got the car, it had hardware 2.5 in it. Um, and with you know several back and forth with Tesla, I did manage to get upgraded to hardware three. And that was done at no charge to me. Um, solely because the car had purchased the full self-driving subscription, or not the subscription rather, the car had the full self-driving package included with it, which technically includes hardware upgrades as necessary. Um, again, it was a little bit of a fight, but I managed to get hardware 3.0 um, for no extra charge. So again, not fully unsupported. Essentially, it comes down to no warranty, and if you wanted to go the route of the safety inspection, you could get yourself back on the supercharger network. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna to try to be as transparent as possible. I will break down the ultimately what it cost us to repair the car and put it back on the road. Um, and if I feel that ultimately that cost savings was worth it. Now, to start with the car, we got the base car from the insurance auctions 
Um, it cost about $20,500 plus a little bit of shipping for the car itself. Once we got it here, the process for Tesla is a little bit of a challenge. So because I'm not an authorized Tesla body shop, I can't just call the dealership and order parts. What I need to do first is get the car transferred into my name at the ministry and then I can prove to Tesla that I am in fact the owner of the car. Once that is done, they will add the car to my Tesla account and then and only then can I order parts for the car because the VIN is now associated with my name in the account. So that was about an extra week of screwing around but once that was done, um, I was clear to, to order parts for it. What I did do is I decided, um, so I mean, first off, I'm in Canada. The process might be a little bit different no matter wherever you are, but for our process, when we go to rebuild the title for it, it involves a regular mechanical safety inspection, but it also involves a structural safety inspection. In the documentation for the structural safety, uh, it needs to have receipts for where all of your parts come from. So if you were to buy parts on the used market or aftermarket, uh, but specifically the used market, you need to have VIN numbers attached to those parts um, as a paper trail so that nothing came from chop shops, for example. So there was a good paper trail as to where all the parts came that went back into your car that's now back on the road. So what I decided to do to simplify that, and basically because the parts department at Tesla the cost of the parts was fairly in line to what I could find parts for in the aftermarket world or the used world. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so where was I? The cost of parts through t the Tesla dealership is, f is actually fairly good in pricing. So. I decided I might as well just get my parts brand new from Tesla. Then I had receipts for where the parts came from for brand new parts, simplifying my rebuild process at the end. So it ended up, I was about roughly $8,500 in parts to repair the car. And then a little bit of paint work after the fact, um, put me at roughly grand total of just over $30,000 Canadian into this um, 31,000 kilometer Model 3 that had full self-driving retained. So we didn't do too bad on the car itself, but you need to take into account that that is now a rebuilt title. So whenever you go to resell that car, you will take a hit on the resale value because it will never be worth what a clean titled Model 3 is worth. It'll always have a bit of a discount to the market because it is a rebuilt title. Um, as long as you're comfortable with that and whatever your time horizon is, in our case, we're gonna drive the car for a couple of years, um, it factors out to really not be a, a major factor. The other thing I would like to discuss is what the overall cost of ownership of this car has been. Now, I rebuilt this car in October, October November of 2022 um, my wife started driving it in December, so we've got just over six months of driving on the car. And we have done absolutely nothing to the car. So it hasn't needed anything. Um, it's still received its over-the-air updates, but as far as maintenance, the car has required nothing, absolutely nothing. Add that to the fact that I, since I didn't do the high voltage safety inspection, I chi charge the car primarily from the shop here. So I have a level two charger here at the shop and a couple times a week we charge it up here at the shop. But I also have solar on the roof of the shop. Uh, not a large system, I got about four kilowatts of solar, but that is enough that it pretty much offsets whatever the cost of the car was in charging. So, you know, it's essentially been a wash in what the hydro costs are. Um, I understand, you know, that's not everybody's situation. Solar is not um, the cheapest thing or even, 
ideal for a lot of places to put on, but it just so happens that I already had it on the shop and it worked out great for us. The other expense with the car is there was an increase in our insurance costs. So from what we were driving previous to this Model 3, we ended up paying about $400 more a year in insurance. Um, I think it worked out to about $1,500, maybe $1,600 in a yearly insurance cost for the car. So that is in fact up a little bit from uh, what we were driving previously. Actually, I just wanna to touch on that electricity thing real quick. Um, there's lots of conversations I hear about the impending um, large scale adoption of electric cars and our electricity grid not being able to support the usage that we're gonna now demand from it with the charging for the electric cars. Um, I can pretty much self-generate what I consume from just the solar on the shop. It makes sense to me that if we could free up more capacity for rooftop solar and make it more attractive for the homeowners to want to go that route, then why couldn't we have a lot of these places essentially self-generate what the electric car would consume and you know virtually offset that cost? Up in Canada, um, at least in the Ontario area, we are exclusively net metering now, so I can never put enough solar up that it would be a net positive for me monthly in uh, in terms of cash flow i can only ever sell back to the grid the same amount that i would consume and i'll never be paid anything i generate on top of that that's net metering if they could free that up and get back to the 10 kilowatt uh, maximum that they were allowing previous to this you know there's a lot of places that could self-generate and then add to the grid for you know the other places that weren't interested in putting rooftop solar on just for an example that seems like a relatively you know quick and simple solution uh, passing a lot of the infrastructure costs on to the homeowners and the end consumers that would support the increased demand in electric cars but i don't know Sometimes the simplest solution isn't always the solution that we go for. Well, I guess to boil all this down, was rebuilding the car worth it? Would I do it again? Um, actually, we're gonna probably redo it again. We have a 2022 Model Y, again, that was shipped up here for a donor vehicle for another electric project um, that has no structural damage. It is a 4680 car so it's brand new technology it's um it hasn't blown any of the airbags windshields intact this is another one that was a salvage car but it looks like it's going to be a relatively easy repair to put back on the road so that one's going to be slightly different because it is imported from texas so we need to secure a rev for it first and we're stuck on a recall for an over-the-air update that currently won't update, but it's just another little Tesla complication, but we'll get it figured out. Um, yeah, so big takeaway was rebuilding the Tesla is not as scary of a job as it may seem. And I'm finding more and more that insurance companies are quick to write off these cars rather than rather than have body shops fix them. I don't know if that's uh, purely a lack of knowledge for the cars. I don't know if it's complication with getting parts um, or there's gotta be some reason for it, but I'm finding that cars with very minimal damage are being classified salvage or branded salvage when it wouldn't take a whole lot to put these back on the road and put them back on the road safely. So I'll give you a little walk around the car. I'll show you what uh, the car ended up being and um, it, it looks fine. It's, uh, it's been an absolutely great car for us. If you guys have learned anything at all, um, don't forget to subscribe. It uh, really helps out small channels like me. I appreciate everything. There it is, finished product. Pretty happy overall, turned out good. There's the Model Y waiting. Mm. 
Only thing is the giant wheel well gap that we gotta address. I'm not used to driving a stock height car. Full self-driving computer it does have FSD beta 11.4.2, so right up to date. The car is named Sagittarius A. If anybody knows why that's funny, leave me a comment.